Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, impact review for the 10th of November 2020. can't believe we're going to be saying 2021 in a matter of weeks here. Anyway, uh, four days before impact plus special turning point and uh, the opening video recaps the ongoing investigation of the shooting of Johnny Bravo. Uh, also mentions... Deanna Perrazzo not recapturing the Knockouts Championship from Sue Young. And the team of Rich Swan and Eddie Kingston versus Sammy Callahan and Eric Young. Caleb with a K opens the show, introducing the first match of the show. Love that Impact gets to wrestling pretty quickly right away. Sorry, by the way, if you can hear my heater in the background. Anyhow... Uh, having a Nevea defeat to Neil Dashwood and Madison Rain with Caleb with a K. Uh, Dashwood and Rain formed during last week's locker room talk. They decided to try to see if they can be a good team and go into the Knockouts Tag Tournament together, um, which, by the way, starts next week. Um, basically, they're testing to see how good they're going to be for the tournament. Uh, Dashwood and Rain are friendly uh, and have an early upper hand against Nevea. Havoc gets in and clears house. Uh, Dashwood has trouble with Havoc, and she tosses Rain to the wolves. Uh, Dashwood then lets Rain get destroyed, and then Havoc uh, hits a pile driver for the pin. Post match, Dashwoods and Caleb. Make the notion that Rain wasn't at their level. And Dashwood said they'd find someone else within a week. And Dashwood's likely to find herself uh, by, by the end of the show with a new partner. At least that's what the implication was. Um, Josh Matthews said he's not looking forward to uh, Madison Rain's version of the loss. He runs down the Turning Point card as well as tonight's matches. Gia Miller interviews the Good Brothers. She asks about their tag match at Turning Point in a few days. Anderson said the Impact Tag Titles are the only titles that have eluded them. And he says this Saturday that's going to change. They'll finally win them. Ethan Page walks up and he and Anderson trade slaps before walking away. Anderson and Alexander is the main event tonight. We get a commercial for another uh, Talking Shop of Mania. Tommy Dreamer interrupts Larry D and later Cody Deaner, who are mad at Johnny Swinger. Um, he said he didn't shoot Bravo. X Division champion Rohit Raju defeats TJP to win the to retain his championship. Um, TJP is in his last chance for the championship as long as Rah uh, Rahit Raju is a champion. Um, match sees a dominant and focused TJP working on Raju's legs early. Raju does use the referee as a weapon, gains control of the match because of doing, doing so. He then works on TJP's arm. TJP mounts a comeback before we know what's going on, and then uh, Raju uh, counters a Mamba splash into a crossface while TJP is turning in, in, things into a knee bar. Um, I will say TJP is so much better in Impact than he was ever allowed to be in WWE, and it's amazing to me that he hasn't found a more steady and growing place to work, AEW, maybe ROH, maybe New Japan, but something more for TJP has to be there somewhere. Uh, Finish sees the referee distract himself by putting, by putting away the title belt, and then Raju, um, you know, low blows TJP, follows up with a running knee for the win, Decent match. Um, TJP can't challenge again for the X Division title. Um, and then uh, Hernandez confronts Falaba about the stolen money from several weeks ago. Hernandez blames Ba for shooting Bravo to hide the money from him. Kira Hogan, Tasha Steeles walk up and defended Bala. They told Hernandez off. 
Hogan's distra- and Hogan distracts Bala and steals stole the money from Bala. The stolen money thing is going kind of interesting. Rascals are in the treehouse for the uh, uh, first time in months. However, they were being evicted uh, from the treehouse, and they are, I guess, according to rumors, leaving Impact Wrestling. Where they go, who knows? Anyway, Chris Sabin defeats AC Romero with Larry D. Uh, Romero and D take out Alex Shelley with the purpose of making an impact, no pun intended. Uh, last week, Sabin challenged uh, either of Triple XL to a match. Um, Clash of Styles matches all this is. Romero dominates early using his power. Saban gets tossed from corner to corner. Saban does manage a comeback using his speed to his advantage. Hits a dive over the top. Saban goes uh, for several kicks. And he hits with a couple. Finally pins Romano. Um, Saban looks good. Romero really doesn't. After the match, D attacks Saban. Um... Sammy Callahan approaches Chris Bay backstage. They agree to work together on Eddie Edwards um, because there's a match between the two of them coming up next. Um, Tommy Dreamer has James Mitchell in the hot chair. Mitchell makes the argument he wouldn't use a gun to take out someone, nor would he waste uh, Bravo's blood. And Mitchell said he did have an idea who could have done it. Eddie Edwards and Chris Bay. uh, Basically, back and forth match. Bay uses a bit of a speed advantage. Edwards uses experience to get comebacks. And he dodges a cutter at a point. uh, Turned the momentum into a pin. Match is really short. Doesn't really build up anything. Uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll do a rematch at Turning Point. Maybe they'll do a rematch next week. But Bay is falling fast since losing the X Division Championship. Um, anyway, Bay comes into the ring with a chair. Callahan appears in the ring and takes out Edwards with a bat. Rich Swan comes down, makes the save. Ken Shamrock comes down too. Three on two, um, Edwards and Swan do not wind up with the better of that. Callahan, Callahan uh, tastes hitting Swan with the bat, and then uh, Rascals run down, make the save, chased away, Bay, Callahan, and Shamrock. Um, anyway, backstage... Um, Tennille Dashwoods reluctantly asked her Dana Grace to team up with her in the tournament. Grace said she didn't have to trust her, but that turning point they could wrestle together and maybe she could earn her trust. Uh, Rich Swan thanks the Rascals for the save. Swan suggested they team uh, with Trey Miguel and Rich Swan to take on Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz. Why they would do this, nobody knows. Impact plus flashback moment of the week, British Invasion versus Beer Money um, from Turning Point 2009. Miller interviews Perrazzo and Kimberly about Perrazzo's no-DQ match with Sue Young in a few days. Um, Perrazzo said she's always had a plan and she would retain her title. And uh, Kimberly... Uh, disapproved. Perrazzo goes at her only to find a message to uh, in red paint written on the wall. I think you're alone now is the message. Uh, Kimberly uh, is knocked out against a window. This is again just goofy. Speaking of goofy, Dreamer and Mitchell back. The conversation ends. Dreamer tells Mitchell that he's using the information to investigate. He bring, brings in Havoc, who wouldn't answer any questions. Reno Scum, Luster the Legend, and Adam Thornstone defeat Paula Bala Crazy Steve. Not a match I really care about. There's no, ma- no real 
uh, story to the match either. Hernandez henchman Ba has issues with, I suppose, since he stole money. Match doesn't really matter. Crazy Steve is a baby face. Uh, ba gets a hot tag, runs wild. Uh, Reno scum regains control. Um, they use a curve stomp from the top to get an advantage. Uh, Good Brothers, um, you know, eventually will win the titles and they need teams to face. This is just goofy. Backstage, Chris Saban asks for backup against Triple XL on Saturday. Um, he asked James Storm for this help. That's an interesting development since it appears Shelly's going to be out for a while. Willie Max in the hallway backstage getting himself checked out by a doctor. He has to clear. He has to get cleared for Saturday. Um, Moose jumps him in the process. Matthews and Rain runs down the final card for Turning Point. Moose and Willie Mack, Eddie Edwards and Dablari. Brian Myers and Swaggle. Dashwood and Grace versus Rosemary and Taya. The North versus the Good Brothers. Sue Young versus Deanna Perrazzo and Rich uh, Swan versus Sammy Callahan. That's a heck of a lineup, and I'm actually looking forward to Turning Point. This feels like a lame duck show, and I don't necessarily know that they need to do these monthly specials. Maybe build them every six weeks, but I feel like they're overreaching sometimes with these monthly specials. Carl Anderson with Doc Gallows defeats Josh Alexander with Ethan Page, basically teasing the Good Brothers as your next tag champions um, because they are going to meet in four days. Uh, last week, Gallows defeats Ethan e. Page in a singles match, and thus we have their inverted partners here next. Match is, is decent. Alexander controls the match for almost the entire first half, works over Anderson's upper body in the process. A comeback Anderson. Um, they trade a couple of near falls. Anderson hits a gun stun. Ethan Page rushes the ring, attacks Anderson for the DQ. Um, both teams brawl to the back a bit before security comes down to break them up and the show goes off the air. Overall, the, again, as I just mentioned, this feels like a lame duck version of, uh, of Impact. There's nothing actually wrong with that, but at the same time, it's kind of one of those, you know, could they do something different? Could they have, um, would they have better matches if they weren't doing Turning Point? I don't know. But anyway, until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.